ladies and gentlemen, the Deadpool Choir. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, guys. Look at this. Thanks, guys. It was unbelievable. Wow. Look at all these Deadpools. Holy Toledo. I saw it. I saw a Bob Ross Deadpool. I saw a Woody Deadpool. Did anybody see a Peter Pool? Was there a Peter Pool out there anywhere? No? No, it's the greatest show in pool. I saw that. But I went Peter Pool. Hey, man. Rob Delaney. Peter Pool's going to be our moderator today. Thanks, Rob. That's cool. I love Hall H. We were here on Thursday. Did anybody see Deadpool and Wolverine? Uh, that, that team uh, did an amazing job just minutes ago. It became the number one R-rated opening weekend of all time. And at the same time, at the same time, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, of which Deadpool and Wolverine was our 34th, just crossed $30 billion at the box office. Which is crazy. We had a great time here on Thursday. We had a great drone show, and they presented us after. Did you guys see this drone show? It was gigantic. And there was a guy from the Guinness World Book of Records who came out and handed Lou Esposito and I these plaques. We didn't really do the drone show, but we got the plaques because it was the biggest fictional character drone show ever. Uh, which is cool. We'll take it. Guinness Book. Um, but you know what I like? I like that Hall H doesn't just look back. We've looked back. Deadpool and Wolverine's in theaters. <laughs> Hall H looks forward. And what is coming up next? So today we're going to talk about three movies we have coming out in 2025. The first of which is Captain America Brave New World. <laughs> and we have the cast, Rob. Let's do it. Let's hear it. Let's bring the cast. Let's bring him out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, please, Mr. Tim Blake Nelson. return to that and I think when you see some things you'll see that it is that level of grounded action movie that we also can do in the uh, in the MCU. Right on. And Anthony, unlike Steve Rogers, Sam doesn't have the super soldier serum. How does Sam's lack of superpowers affect your approach to the action scenes? Whoa, very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is surrounded by a, uh, a host of very good um, intricate characters that help him move through the plot of the story. He's not so much a, a muscle-bound guy, he's more of a, a cerebral, uh, th uh, thoughtful character. You know, when you first see Sam in Falcon Winter Soldier, he's a counselor. So he keeps that counseling, he keeps that approach throughout the course of the character in all of the films. Right on. 
And Sam, it's very cerebral answer right there. We will punch very people in the face. Right I will there. punch you in the face. <laughs> and counsel you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sam, it's been 16 years since you first played this role. Woo! What's different about the leader this time around? Uh, Because I, um, I hey, give it to him, Tim. Give it to him. <laughs> no spoilers. I want them to bring me back. <laughs> and uh, 16 years. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I say how happy I am that he's back. No, no, no little tag left behind. That, that, that he was there on the floor with his head beginning to bulge. And now here we are. Yeah, and by the time I'm brought back again, uh, to quote our brother, where art thou? I'll be gumming pabulum. <laughs> So, um, anyway, uh, they wrote uh, a, a great story for him, and uh, I think people are going to be pretty excited. All right. And Danny, Danny, you're no stranger to the skies. Can you share anything about the sequences in this film? How are those wings, and what's the secret to looking cool while flying through the air? Wow, I feel... <laughs> That's one of the first times I hear it out loud too, said in public. But I, uh, I just I feel at home in the skies, and so it's cool to take these wings that uh, have gone through many iterations and uh, some wear and tear for years and years. Um, I thought they also came with knee braces too because they're a little bit older, but. Uh, <laughs> Truthfully, and this story was told in a truthful way. All right. Now, now you'll notice our director, Julius Ona, is not here. He uh, tested positive for COVID. F who tried to give me COVID over uh, Zoom. He is not here. He tried to give me COVID over Zoom. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about it. Right now. Uh, but thankfully, he sent us something to share with you. He sent a scene from Captain America Brave New World, just for you, and we're all gonna watch it right now. He got COVID, but to replace him, we got somebody way more cool. Mr. 
I, I, I would have grown a mustache if I'd been asked. <laughs>
just thank you. <laughs> Thunderbolt Ross in Brave New World, but he's not actually in Thunderbolt. What's going on? That is correct. Mr. Ford plays Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, and these wonderful actors play the Thunderbolts because sometimes in 85 years of comic history, writers and the artists use the same name. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> hey, Jake, what's the asterisk? Oh, the, oh, the asterisk. Uh, I can Four. tell you that it means something. <laughs> You want me to tell them what it means? You tell them. Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> you have to see the movie! <laughs> hey, Sebastian. Sebastian, it's been over 13 years. I think. Yeah. This one where I am. I have, um, I have some <laughs> suspicious thoughts. <laughs> I, um. I hope you said boots and not boobs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, well, with that, Florence, a lot of these characters don't necessarily play well with others. What can you tell us about the team dynamic? That's the joy of watching them together, is that they don't play well together. Um, in terms of their dynamics, I mean, we had a, a, a real ride because we actually loved working with each other, and we clearly understand each other because we've all accidentally matched, both of us. Totally. <laughs> oh, no. The Geraldine and Lewis, welcome to the Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure you understand the challenges and the weight and responsibility of a three-letter name, right? Yeah. Rob, Bob, I feel you there. I, I just want to, I see you, <laughs> and I, I connect with you there. And, and I, I'm sure that you know as much as I do about Bob for that reason. Okay, terrific. <laughs> um, Hannah, you're a returning MCU villain, potentially former villain. Yeah! Well, it's good to be back. Um, and, you know, coming back from working with such incredible actors and characters as well, it's been such an honor and a pleasure. And where we left Ava, and where we find Ava, and how she works with others is going to be interesting. All right. Tip one, tip one. I can say, guys. Hi, Julia. Hi, Rob. We've seen him. Sly puppet master working behind the scenes. Yes. We'll see a lot more of her in this movie. What is she after? Oh, I'm so happy you asked me that question. She, Valentina, is after power, control, and I would say just generally she wants to kick ass in the Marvel Universe. I think that's a good answer. I like it. And David, uh, not really a question, I'm just. You stole your uniform from Zet. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I got it on Etsy. Another <laughs> one in Vancouver who does Red Guardian and Green Goblin exclusively. <laughs> email, email me that. Um, hey, Wyatt, what can you tease about your character in Thunderbolts? <laughs> Everyone's gonna fucking love me. <laughs> I get put up on this stage. I feel like Kevin, this is a recurring thing. I just say I don't know, and you have some pure joy out of me. I have no clue what to say. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's going to be fun. It's really, really, really fun to be with a group of actors that you love being with and uh, have a good time. So whatever comes out and you guys watch and you guys see on film was um, one of my favorite experiences that I've ever had working. 
uh, and just being with a group of great people. And that, I hope, comes, comes through, honestly, uh, through, you know, I guess that's a bad answer for me, but for everybody. I, I, I liked it. it. Yeah. Uh, hey, Sebastian, what's the best part about playing Bucky after all these years? You know, like having nine lives. Uh, how many are left? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's been really a privilege, honestly. I, I remember being on the stage with Captain America Winter Soldier, and I was so terrified at the time that I was like, it's okay, he has a mask, he doesn't speak. I don't have to speak. <laughs> um, but it's such a, I'm so grateful to see everybody here and You're to be so up here with this incredible talent. <laughs> so, I'm like, Right on. So David, David, we're gonna see Alexi reunite with his adopted daughter, Yelena. What's it like for these two characters to be back on a job again? Aww. Aww. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to reiterate what Wyatt said about this group of people. I had one of the greatest experiences of my life working on this movie as well. They're all wonderful, but I do have a favorite, and uh, her name is Florence Pugh. Uh, I think she's, uh, she's this up-and-coming actress. You may hear more about her. Um, but she is just electric to work with, and I think the complexity between their relationship this time around, we got to go to all these different levels. I mean, there's... Like warmth and humor, but there's also a lot of pathos between the fact that, uh, you know, he's a terrible narcissist who has a hard time showing up for other people, and she's very dedicated to killing people, I guess. It's a lot of good combination for a relationship, the start of a relationship. But we do get to go to a lot of great places, and uh, it was truly such a joy to work with these people, and uh, I'm really proud of what we, what we did. We all like feeling cool doing stunts, <laughs> but I, I, I can't claim all the stunts because there is a no way that any of us would look as cool as we did without our stuntees and the stunt team, the stunt coordinator Heidi Moneymaker, who stunt double Scarlett Johansson for 10 years. Um, so yes, I like doing my own stunts, but I also appreciate that maybe they make it look cooler sometimes. But we have something to show you. in which you can see some of these stunts. And I would like to say that um, the first time I was here was four years ago, and, and that was the last time I was here. And I remember the energy that all of you guys gave us, and it honestly lived in me for about a year after. And I just want to say thank you so much for all of you being here and for giving us the energy again. is so felt by every single time we come into contact with you and your love and your fandom, so thank you so much. This movie... <laughs> this movie is so um, wonderful and bizarre and it's very brave and it's because of this cast, this director, the producers, the stunts, the bloody stunts, yeah. oh my god! And I really, really hope that you recognize it and that you feel it too. And we are so proud and we are so impressed. And I'm so happy that we're here again. And I'm so grateful that you guys are the first to see a snippet of our movie. And I hope weekend, we are releasing the first Marvel's First Family into the MCU, the Fantastic Four. We have, not, we have not 
even started filming this yet. It starts filming Tuesday in the UK. Pedro is there and sent a picture with all of them. You saw that online. But our director, our director was willing to fly all through the night to be here with you, ladies and gentlemen, our director, Matt Shackman. have some of the most iconic powers in Marvel history, from Reed's stretchy limbs to Johnny's fire abilities. How do you want to bring those powers to life on screen? Uh, I mean, I, I love the Fantastic Four, I love their power set, and it's one of the things we've worked the hardest on, because we want to be true to the comics, but we also want to be true to life. We want to root it in physics and anatomy and all those things that can make it feel incredibly real. So we've done tons of tests and concept art and storyboarding and VFX tests and research. We've talked to scientists, we've talked to animal experts, we've talked to everybody. We've gone out into the desert to find the best rock to make the thing from, right? Um, we've done everything we can to make it amazing. Right on. And you journeyed through the decades with WandaVision and we know that fantastic Sixties New York. Were there any sixties details you wanted to make sure to include? I mean, the, the same approach to the powers. We want to we want to do our research. We want to be authentic. We want to bring it to life in a very real way. But at the same time, we also are not doing just the sixties, right? We're doing a retro future sixties. So a lot of it was about finding inspiration from the futurists of that time, especially Sid Mead, and using that as, a, as sort of inspiration to build a whole new world that is part the New York that you know from the 60s and something you've never seen before. But more than just the visual aesthetics, uh, the 60s to me is all about optimism. It's about looking to the stars, about dreaming, about traveling into space. It's about how with the right heart and the right mind you can do anything, which is what the Fantastic Four is all about. And so it's more about capturing the spirit and the tone, which is not a bad segue, because I put something together for you guys. And we, we haven't started shooting yet, but we put together a little bit of pre-shoot stuff, some animatics, we, we've, we've kind of cobbled together something to give you a sense of what this movie will be about. Um, and so, do you guys want to see it? Yeah! Let's do it! Uh, that, uh, that is the official title, The Fantastic Four First Steps, and that amazing music you heard was our composer, Michael Giacchino. Yeah! Would, be here, would be here with us right now, but is hosting a NASA panel somewhere else on the convention floor, for real, which I thought was apropos. <laughs> Uh, what are you there, Rob? Oh, I have got a little gift that everybody here is going to get. It's a Fantastic Four fan and map, and you're all going to get one. Pretty cool surprise. Uh, and the other surprise is that the cast is all here. Ladies and gentlemen. New family. <laughs> I don't 
I, I, nobody knows that Matt and I have known each other for like 25 years. <laughs> And um, we started with the same talent manager, actually, and he almost became my roommate in 1999, but he came and he saw the place and was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's different. <laughs> that's a true story, yep. I uh, love that. Hey, Vanessa and Joseph, you two play siblings. Did you do any brother-sister bonding to prepare? Well, we're both the only Brits in the cast, aren't we, pretty much? That's the truth. So we're, we're gonna get down the pub, and make everyone come with us, because we're filming in London, aren't we? And we're the Londoners, so we've got to show everyone a good time. Seems only right, yes. Yeah! <laughs> um, hey, Evan, uh, we're here at Hall H with some MCU veterans. Did you get any advice from fellow Marvel actors about joining the MCU? Um, good question, Rob. <laughs> I did, you know what, actually I did, um, this is going to be a boring, fairly earnest answer, but I got a really nice uh, text message from Mark Ruffalo because, you know, uh, it's, it's just, just, um, to sort of demystify the process of motion capture and because it's something I've never really done before and he sent me this very long, um, generous text about how, you know, just simplifying it and taking away kind of the... I was a bit scared of the technology and just sort of saying, you know, it's just like, you know, making scenes like, you know, no normal scene work. Right so, that was real advice. That's very nice. Um, let's see here. Hey, Joseph, with the 60 plus years legacy of this title, and this being Marvel Studios' first venture with these characters, what's one thing you hope to bring out from your character that fans could be excited for? Johnny! Evan? <laughs> What am I going to bring to it? I think we're all collectively going to bring uh, an essence that is a family. Rather than thinking about what we individually are going to bring, we're, it's a team sport, this. And we're all going to work very hard to bring a feeling of a family to this, to this film. That's what it means. we got a question for Vanessa. After a week of rehearsals and the pre-shoot, what new things have you learned about your family? Individually or together. Yeah, I guess, you know what, I honestly, I don't think I've laughed so much in a rehearsal period in, before. We laugh so much and it's so beautiful to be at work and you know, we're, we're really so dedicated to try and make it the best we can and we feel so kind of, um, we want to do it justice and it's amazing reading the comics from the 60s and all the way up and seeing this family that has traveled with so many people in life. I feel so honored to be a, you know, a part of it, and, um, but to laugh through it, which I hope we can capture in the movie because when you read the comics, it's got such joy in it. And so I think you, we can also, we've laughed a lot. We've cried with laughter many days, so hopefully we can bring that to the movies. But uh, you start shooting on Monday back in the UK. Don't you have to... We, we gotta go. Yeah. yeah. The plane, the plane. <laughs> they, they literally have to fly back, but the good thing about that is they have their own fantastic car, which will take them back to the UK hopefully very, very quickly.
Do you want to hear a little bit about the Avenger film? Yeah. You know, one thing that, that people uh, have been asking uh, of late is who the heck is going to direct these two movies? into the Winter Soldier, into Civil War, into Infinity War, climaxing all of it with Avengers Endgame. That, that four movie run was incredible, and it left us creatively spent with all of our emotions on the floor. In the time since, through a very special story, Joe and I have come to potentially see a road forward with you all. the biggest story that Marvel Comics ever told. It's the first comic book run that I read as a kid that made me fall in love with comics. It's the reason that Anth and I are standing up here. And I think you all know the name of it. The name? No! know, Secret Wars is incredibly ambitious. Uh, the magnitude of the filmmaking, the vastness of the storytelling, world-colliding epicness, all of this made Joe and I understand that we would need to make another essential movie first in order for all of us to be ready for Secret Wars. Yeah, there, is, there is one very, very important character that is required. And it's a character that Marvel has not introduced yet. Not ever and it could be the most important character in all of the Marvel Universe. If we're going to do this, if we're going to bring him to movie theaters worldwide, then I think we're going to need the greatest actor in the world to play that character. Wow. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe, we give you the one person who could play Victor Von Doom. New man. 
Lakers. including everybody in this room together, is for us to help create the greatest possible experience that we can all have together in a movie theater. So let's get to it, bring your imagination, your love, and your passion, and we will see you in two years with Doomsday! Does anybody have any questions? No.